because my opinion on both of them, I could see Anthony Joshua knocking out Tyson Fury. I could see that happening uh, because you look at a fighter like Tyson Fury, he does a, he, he does something similar to me defensively that, that was able to get away from Wilder, which is stay away from one or two big shots. I, I've always had my strength of when I spar big punchers, I've always said, bring me the bigger puncher because I, I, could, I, I could see, you know, one, two, three shots. I could see, uh, I, I get a read. Wilder gives you this big read, like he's like, you know, he's, yeah, he's coming hard. But I mean, he gives me all that. So by the time I saw that, boom, I'm moving. I ain't just like the ones that stand there and do this to Wilder, you're going to get hurt. So I already knew that I wasn't going to just pick my gloves up uh, to take the shot like that. And as the same way Tyson Fury does not do that. So what Joshua does is watch it. Joshua don't give you that boom. He, he's very fluid with his punches and he comes with a three, four, five, and maybe even a six. And he's very elusive and very balanced and he's, it comes fast with those punches and uh that is uh that is what um gave me problems and that's what will give anybody problems really so if he sits on his punches and, and 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 could be fluid he'll take away that movement that tyson fury does very well and he'll give that movement a lot of problems with this with the fourth five and six combinations so i say joshua wins by knockout and that and, and i predict about seven eight rounds contrary to what iron mike tyson said about joshua telegraph and his punches this is a man that's actually shared the ring with anthony joshua and he goes joshua does not telegraph his punches he said while the telegraph his punches that's why fury was able to knock him out so fury's gonna have trouble with joshua because joshua doesn't really give you a signal when it's about to let let them things go you know so yeah <laughs> I, I, I didn't agree with Mike Tyson when he said that in the first place. Anyways, about Joshua telegraphing his punches. In my opinion, I don't even think Mike Tyson follows boxing as closely as as you would you'd think today. So yeah, his opinion isn't really based off of you know a lot of intense studying. You know, Mike's a historian. He's not a, a current a current events sort of guy. Anyways, yeah, I, I agree with what Eric said there. Joshua can, you know, hit Fury with stuff he doesn't see coming. He's not no wilder. This is a different kettle of fish. This is an elite, elite puncher. Okay? It's not a one-handed fighter. Joshua's got the uppercut. He's got the left hook. He's got the right hand. He's got a jab. He can move. He can box. He's not no wilder. Like Eric said, if Joshua sits on his punches and lets them go, I don't, I don't, I don't even see Fury approaching this fight like he did Wilder too. That's not happening. It's not happening. He knew he saw something in Wilder from the first fight. That's why he was brave enough to approach the second fight the way he did. In my opinion, in the first place, he should approach the first fight the way he did the second fight. Because Wilder was suspicious from the jump. The guy cannot fight on the inside. AJ can find the inside. So it's it's gonna be pretty tricky. <laughs> Very tricky for Fury. AJ can throw those little sh short uppercuts, those little short left hooks. It's gonna be a difficult. It's a different kettle of fish. This is not Wilder. Wilder needs he needs space. He's a mid range. He needs he needs that little. It's like a little javelin <laughs> javelin throw. That's that is right hand. He needs room to throw that that only shot he has. <laughs> Asia has <laughs> has an arsenal. He's not a one shot one fire. Shot, one fire. shot fire. Moving on. White Povetkin, March sixth. Let's go. That will never happen. You know. I'm not that kind of guy. I look at Povetkin, a former world champion, former amateur world champion, former Olympic champion, you know, great fighter. He's only lost two fights in his whole career to Joshua and Klitschko. He's somebody who ain't lost a fight in many years, you know. From amateur to pro, he beat everyone. If you look at his amateur record, all the way through, he's beating everyone. We know how tough he is. We know how good he is. We know how skillful he is, obviously. Some people would say, oh yeah, he was this age, he was that age, but the last thing to go is someone's power. As we saw in the fight, you know, so I never overlooked him. The whole time I stayed grounded, I was like, listen, none of those fights don't mean nothing unless I get past this guy, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't say I necessarily disagree with Dylan there. 
if you if you watch the fight he was busting the fight all the way through until that uppercut from hell landed plus 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 it wasn't a coincidence that you know Povetkin's a skillful operator he knew exactly what he was doing well he didn't put himself in that position he didn't get knocked down what, what was it four times on purpose he didn't he didn't put himself in that position per se i mean he put himself in the position to land the uppercut that was intentional the punch wasn't lucky by any stretch of the imagination you know but it was in my opinion it was a brief lapse in concentration coupled with the fact that dylan seems a bit susceptible to uppercuts he got dropped by an uppercut against what was it Rivas got knocked out by an uppercut against AJ now knocked out by another uppercut against um, against Povetkin so Xavier Miller and um, the Shadow Knight this new trainer they need to they need to work on that they need to really really <laughs> all the drills need to be uppercut based <laughs> all pure uppercut based drills in my opinion approaching this fight on March, March 6th because yeah we don't want Povetkin landing another one of those monster punches because yeah it will be night and night again I think he also needs to be a lot more aggressive in this fight I think he would have got him out of there earlier before that uppercut landed if he was a bit more aggressive in the last fight he was doing a lot a bit too much boxing for me in my opinion he needs to add a bit more that old Dylan White rough and ruggedness to his newfound boxing skills you know he needs to press the action test this old man's engine you know test the legs even though Dylan is, is a bit flat footed you know he can still test the the old man legs you know just make make the old man work press him and then I reckon Dylan gets him out of there within four rounds in my opinion my opinion my opinion yeah in other news apparently Andy the destroyer Ruiz has lost some more weight again they're saying he's lost 25 pounds the last time he lost weight was approaching the Ruiz Joshua 2 fight they said he lost weight and he found them in the ring on fight night but yeah let's let's check out Andy's statement this time around well not his statement his trainer statement let's check out Manny, Manny Robles let's check out some guys statements regarding Andy trainer Jorge Capetillo let's check out his statements Andy's a kid he got distracted I can only see he's more calm now with his family He's getting back on track, especially mentally. He has hunger again. He's tasted what it means to be a world champion. I can see he wants more, but we have to be willing to sacrifice. So to be around Canelo, who has this mindset day in and day out, is a great influence for Andy. His weight has gone down 25 pounds. He looks very slim. He doesn't want to show up to Reynoso looking rough. We've been hearing this stuff for how long how long now and he's been getting ready to get back in the ring for how long the joshua fight was two years ago two years ago what, what what's what's been taking so long listen we don't want to hear none of this anymore get back in the ring or retire go go you know go go do the snickers thing full time you know we, we don't want to hear this he's lost 25 pounds it's, it's irrelevant you're a professional athlete we're not here to hear how many, how much weight you've lost it's ridiculous you know I, I, post post the joshua fight immediately after the fight remember him grabbing the mic of joshua saying oh he wants to see the third fight how embarrassing right after you told us a minute ago that you never trained for the fight ridiculous ridiculous eddie reynoso canelo's trainer better whip this guy into shape you know whip him into shape get, get, get him get his mind right all this eating oh he's, he's got hunger he's got his hunger again never lost his hunger if he had to lose 25 pounds the hunger's been there guys always hungry that's the problem so let me know what you think of everything i spoke about in this video including molina's comments regarding aj fury and also white povetkin well povetkin white too who you got what you make up um what you make of white's comments and also <laughs> andy <laughs> what you think of andy and his weight issues has he lost weight? Has he found weight? What's going on with Andy? Is he going to fight again? What's going on? Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm out.